<laughs> What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound Attack once again, and welcome to yet another how to video. Today, we're going to be talking about how to replace the thermal pads on your ASRock RX 5700 Challenger Pro. Yeah, that pesky card. Everybody has issues with this card. It's almost like the mech overclock from MSI. So, before we get into that, be sure to check out the affiliate links for the necessary tools, etc., down below. I'll get a kickback if you purchase those tools and pads through the affiliate links, so please try to do that if you find the video helpful. Start off, what tools do you need? As always, I use an iFixit toolkit, the Pro. Link will be down in the description. It has all the handy bits that you could ever want to do work on any small electronics, graphics cards being one of them. So I find it comes in handy a lot. Next, you're gonna need some one millimeter thermal pads. We did measure them and that's what it came out to on all of them. And then some three millimeter thermal pads for the back plate and we'll explain why as we go through the how to. Lastly, you'll need some scissors or a cutting board. I really need to get myself another cutting board for this because I, I, I want to cut straighter. I need it. I need to walk the line. You know what I mean? Without further ado, let's get into tearing down the card. So first things first, you're going to flip the card over and there'll be four screws holding the main GPU block cooler onto the GPU. So you're going to loosen them all first, just a little bit, break them loose, and then go around in a star pattern, loosening them a little by little until it finally pops off. It's especially important on this GPU because they use that kind of tension bracket that will put uneven tension on the GPU core. So I definitely want to emphasize loosening them in a star pattern while you're taking it off so you're not inappropriately adding pressure to a certain corner of the GPU core or anything like that. Super important. So. Once that's off, you're gonna flip it over, pop the cooler off, and then take the fan header off. I actually broke the one on the sample that we were doing here. It's pretty difficult to do. It's the same as every other fan header though on every other GPU, and I didn't break it beyond repair. It was fine. We just cracked a little bit of the plastic off of it, not off of the actual plug, but off of the, uh, the board portion. It's okay, it's still functioning just fine. But try not to do that if you can. There are some better options than using your fingernails as well. Maybe a little plastic pry stick out of that. Nice handy iFixit toolkit. Next, you are going to have to do a couple things. First, you, there's gonna be four screws to remove the back plate. And they're gonna be two on the, kind of towards the input output and two on the back of the card. You'll need to remove the back plate to be able to remove the heat sinks that go over the memory modules. So once you get that all done and taken off, you're going to undo those four screws and take the back plate off. Once you've taken the back plate off, you're going to flip the card around and you're going to have six additional screws to remove to get the heat sinks from the VRMs off. So what you're going to do is essentially put all four of those screws in a separate pile that hold the back plate on because they're a different size. And then you're gonna remove the six screws from the back. In some cases, it'll fall off. If it doesn't fall off, you're just gonna pry it up with one of the little plastic pry tools in the iFixit toolkit, or you can use a fingernail, etc., to pop it off because it will get a little sticky with those thermal pads on there. Once that's done, you're gonna expose the memory modules as well as the VRMs. So now that we have all of that exposed, we are going to need to just cut the thermal pads. Like I said, we measured with some calipers here and we've gone over how to measure out thermal pads with calipers. It's super helpful to have some calipers in case you have a GPU that we haven't gone over, but these are all one millimeter. So you're gonna just cut all of the thermal pads the size uh, off of or out of a one millimeter sheet and then place it over the memory modules, being sure to remove the plastic film from both sides, right? And then once you're good there, you need to place the, the heat sinks back onto the memory modules and the VRMs. 
And that can be a little bit tricky because they kind of fall off, so do one at a time. And you gotta kind of hold it with one hand and flip it over and line it up and get the screws in. Then also, if you adjust it at all, you're gonna need to flip it back over and make sure that you have all of the memory modules and VRMs covered there. It's, it's quite tedious on this particular card. It's similar to the GTX 1063 gigabyte that we did earlier as far as that heat plate goes, and it can be a little bit frustrating. But once you're done with that, you, we can then go ahead and turn it back over and apply the three millimeter thermal pads over where the memory modules sit and place the back plate on. We were able to get the three millimeter measurement from measuring the standoffs for the back plate, which come out to about 2.9. So we were able to basically smush down that three millimeter over that and get a little additional cooling. This is kind of nice only for the fact that it is a metal back plate, unlike the MSI Mech Overclock, which is a, a plastic back plate. And on the MSIs, I just now take the back plates off completely because those plastic ones are trash and all they do is hinder airflow. But on these, you can get a little bit more cooling with that metal back plate if you add those thermal pads that aren't on there from the factory. So now that we've done that, we need to flip it back over holding of course the back plate on and screwing in the four screws that hold in the back plate. And now we can put the cooler back on. So apply the thermal paste and just use a spreader in this case because it's always better to use a spreader with the GPU I highly recommend it, especially because getting the right pressure point when you're doing the cross pattern for that GPU block can be a little bit frustrating. And then you're going to plug the fan header back in, place the cooler back on top, lining up the four holes, and then carefully flipping it over and putting the bracket back on. Being sure to tighten the same way that you loosened by starting all four screws and then tightening in a star pattern until they are all tight. Once you're done there, you can slap it back into your gaming rig or your mining rig and get back to the fun of making money or playing video games, whatever you are looking to do there. Thoughts on the particular design for this card as far as cooling goes. It's not quite as bad as the mech overclock. In fact, I'd say it's a little bit better uh, purely from the from the design of putting those separate coolers on there, but it's not as good as having it, you know, actively cooled. These are kind of odd because they're kind of like actively passively cooled, and I'm not a big fan of that. I would rather have the whole heat sink you know, that's attached to the rest of the core cooler onto there. It's also like just feels gimped in like a weird way where like there's all these nice copper heat pipes coming off of the GPU core and then the memory modules are just sitting underneath it, not directly connected to those copper pipes, which is just like what? And then in addition to that, the way they did the heat sinks over the VRMs is that they don't actually tighten down even because they're on one side of the VRMs. So it, it really tightens down to the, to the inside. So there's no pressure on the outside of the memory modules there, which is pretty poor design really, if you think about it. And I think that ASRock definitely needs to do a better job with their cooler design on the next go around. But that pretty much wraps it up. I hope it helps you guys in some form or fashion, get back up and running and lower those temps on the ASRock RX 5700 Challenger. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next Tuesday.